Hello and welcome to Asus Tech Review. Today I'm going to be doing a review about the Razer Nostramo gaming keyboard software, or keypad software I should say, and um, just share with you my feelings and experience with the software and using the product, so hopefully you guys can get a bit of insight and uh, a feel for what the product is before you go out and buy it. So without further ado, here is our first screen. Now before I jump into it, I would recommend that when you get this product, if you get this product, you download the latest drivers and firmware. The product actually doesn't come with a CD, so you're kind of forced to go to their website, but the cool thing is the developers at Razer develop very good um, software. I've got quite a few Razer products, and time and time again, I've always been extremely happy with um, the thought and the layout of the software that is put into creating um, really, really good configuration tools for their hardware. So for this one, yet again, they've done a, a marvelous job. You have your firmware, tiny little file, two seconds to download. You don't need a super internet connection for it. And also the driver for this product, which includes this tool here. The driver is small, again, like the firmware, you don't need a super internet connection to download. It won't take you very long to download it, and it's packed with loads of features. This program seems to incorporate in a very, very good way, easy, friendly to use, along with complex and advanced. So you don't get too lost. I mean, at a glance, looking at it here, it does look a little bit complicated, but it's really not, and that's what I'm going to walk you through now in the next few minutes. So. Just to give you a bit of uh, insight as to what's going to happen when you first get this, you will need to download a driver. When you do, and you have it installed, you're not going to need to mess around with this software. The brilliant thing about this is what you're looking at here, I'll show you now, reset, yes. This here is your, your standard default key layout. So it's ready to jump into a game and straight away start playing. You've got your WSAD already pre-configured for you as you can see W S A D and they are assigned to the keys and the key numbers so for instance W3 key number 3 is W forward 14 C crouch 14 C crouch reload R5 reload R5 so it's it's pretty much ready to go um as they say truly plug and play if you want to change any of your keys, if you're playing a little bit more complex game or you want to tweak it because you, you like to push buttons in a slightly different way, very, very easily done so. But you've also got the some nice advanced options, as you can see here. So to give you a rough idea how it works, um, to start off, you've got eight key maps. So basically, you can have different key layouts. You can have your, your reload and your crouch, or you can swap them around, whichever way you like doesn't matter you can do whatever you want and then key map, key, ugh, excuse me key map number five the exact same keyboard layout but totally different functions when you push the buttons and the cool thing about um, the drop downs here is you can actually set a key to cycle through the key maps it's pretty awesome you can see the um, the lights they change so you can instantly know which key map you're on so it doesn't get too confusing um, to give you an idea, we're going to change key number one, tab, to crouch, just for this example. So it's as easy as drop it down, choose a single key, and hit C. OK, apply, and now, whenever I hit one, my guy's going to crouch, or the C key will push, depending on what the C key does in correspondence with the game you're playing. Um, you can also control the thumb pad, you can see it here. It doesn't have to be a WSAD uh, directional keypad. It can be whatever you like. You've got the same options. The same with the, the side button push and the wheel. Also the middle button, because the middle button is like a, a mouse wheel. You can push it as well as scrolling it up and down. So loads of options. Very cool. Very nicely laid out. You can see the lights change. Um, a good example of a slightly more advanced function would be the macros. You could change your R, for instance, to a macro. Um, a good example would be Call of Duty. You run out of bullets. Last thing you want to be doing is standing around 
um, you know, changing your clip, best way to do it is to crouch down and preferably behind something. So you run behind something, you can hit R for reload, and instead of just reloading, what it can do for you, it can record you crouching down, changing your clip, standing back up again. Very cool. And I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit later on. We've got our key map, so you can choose which key map you want the button to be assigned to. Or you can actually choose that button to cycle through your key maps. So a good example here would be we go key map, key map cycle. So now whenever I push this, it'll cycle like that through my key map configurations. So let's just reset again. Here we go. And take a look at our profiles. So I'm going to show you how nice and easy it is to set up a profile. There's my World of Warcraft for the character Ghost. We've got default, which is the default layout you can see here on key map number one. And now I want to set up this layout here for Brink, because this is perfect for Brink. Brink is a new first person shooter for those of you that don't know. So you just click on Manage Profiles, New, give it a name. Okay, assign it to an application, browse for the application, choose the exe, voila, there you go. Every time I open up the game Brink, it is automatically going to set to this profile and have exactly this key layout, which will make my gaming experience an awful lot easier. If I want to do a a macro, for instance, like the, the crouch, reload, and uh, pop up and shoot. We can do that here. We can call it new macro, crouch, reload. And what we'll do is, to show you, let's say we're in the game. We want to C for crouch, reload, C again to stand up. Done. It's as simple as that. We make another one, a print, because a macro isn't um, just recording your key pushes. You've got a couple of different options as to what type of macros you'd like to have. Um, I'm going to do another one here called Free the Chickens. And this macro is going to be a print screen macro. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our notepad and we're going to set our new macro so you get the idea we stop we've got our free the chickens macro and we can cycle between them now you'll notice when we go to this yarn well, excuse me, to the assign buttons, we can choose macro. It's no longer grayed out. And we can choose crouch and reload. So you, we have here our R for reload. I'm going to change that to macro, crouch and reload. I want it on one button push. I don't want it to be repeated over and over and over. I don't want to have to hold the key down for it, although that would be kind of cool. So a quick push for C, or uh, for, sorry, my apologies, a quick push of the R key for the reload, and a push and a hold for a crouch and reload. That's kind of cool, actually. I'm looking forward to playing around with that. And then we've got the toggle. So just to give you an idea, and to keep it simple, I'm going to go on this one. And I want to change my number one key to our free the chickens. And just to give you a quick demonstration of how that works. We shall open up our notepad and we shall give it another go. When you create your macro and you assign it to the key, you're going to have to click on apply and OK in order for it to work. Now, let's go. I'm going to push our key number one. And here we go. Free the chickens, baby. Hell yeah. So now, there's a bit of a demonstration just to show you how easy it is to set up your macros. and you. Just by looking at that, free the chickens, you can type any kind of a command that you want. Um, okay, so that prints out me pushing down a couple of keystrokes. 
Those keystrokes could be anything from crouch, reload, clip, stand up, shoot, um, or whatever you can possibly think of, and you can create as many of them as you want. You can assign those to as many key maps as you like. It's the, the, the possibilities are endless. It's just an absolutely fantastic uh, piece of hardware, and the software to accompany it and how easy it is to use is really, really great. Um, highly, highly recommended. Just to wrap up the video, I'm going to show you the very last one here, lighting. Um, if I'm playing World of Warcraft, I would like to have my lighting full. Cool. We'll save that. If I'm playing Brink, I would like to have my lighting halfway. So it's not too bright. It's not distracting when I'm playing. And that's pretty much all that is. It's as simple as that. The lighting effect, I do have to say, is quite awesome. It does look very good. When I did the hardware review, I wasn't sure if the colors could be changed. So to answer that question, no, the colors cannot be changed. But the blue razor effect, the theme they have going on, is very awesome. Um, in comparison with the Logitech G13, I think software-based, the comfort of the device, how easy it is to use, the sound, the overall experience, the keys, how the keys sound when you push them, the looseness of them, the build quality, and also the um, the programming quality of the software to support it. It's just astonishing. It's very, very good. And I would highly recommend the Razer much more than I would over the Logitech G13. The Logitech G13 does have some better benefits um, and is useful, but in different circumstances. And a lot of those different circumstances, I feel, would be not gaming related. Whereas this pad here truly is a pad for gaming. I hope this review has been helpful, has helped you see and understand a little bit about the product. And if you're going to make a purchase, has helped you make your decision. If you do have any questions regarding the software, the hardware, or you just want to know how something works, send us an email, or not an email, a message and I will very happily answer you as best I can. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the review. Take care.